We are ready when you're ready. All right, thank you. Uh, Mike Trudell? Mike, I think you're muted if you're there. All right, well, if Mike is busy, we'll go to Dan. Hi, Frank. I'll, I'll do the Mike Trudell questions today. Um, who, who's, who's in, who's out? Uh, Drummond is back in. Uh, he will start. Um, Marquise Morris uh, is, is a game time decision. Dennis Schroeder is a game time decision. Um, they're going to see how it feels when they, they get out and move around a little bit. Um, uh, Marcus Sol is uh, is available, but is also dealing with some hamstring tightness and the broken finger, uh, but but is available. And um, I think everybody else is in, aside from AD and Ron, of course. Well, Frank, we've talked a lot about uh, Talon's development this year and obviously how the, this opportunity can help him long term. But I'm curious, you know, he's scored in double figures, like something like, I don't know, five of the last six or something like that. I have to look again. But is he playing better? Like, has he taken the lessons from the first however many games you guys have played and applied them? And are you seeing a transformed player from even kind of that preseason breakout he had? Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd call it transformed, but, you know, he's growing you know, steadily throughout the course of the season. You know, um, we're on him uh, to be efficient in everything he does and um, you know, keep his turnovers down uh, and, and keep his shot selection uh, really, uh, you know, into the quality shot uh, category. And, um, you know, he's continuing to grow with that. You know, some good, some bad, like all, all young players, but uh, definitely growing. David Locke. Coach, you guys are the best transition defense in the NBA. I mean, also the best defense. I recognize that, but transition defense is so vital and you're the best in the league at it. What have you done so well in that regard? Um, my first thought is you must not have seen the Boston game, but um, we'll go, we'll get past that. <laughs> uh, we have an emphasis on balance and uh, and a sprint versus jog mentality. There's a lot of things that go into it. You know, we have good, we have good speed as a team, you know, and um you know, there's a heavy emphasis on everything we do on the defense spin. Kyle? Frank, um, when you think about, you know, how many guys the, the Jazz are resting today and, and the injuries they have, um, the game you played against Charlotte, the game, game you played against Toronto, just guys out every which way, both teams. Are, are you just anticipating a lot more of these for, you know, the final 16, 15 games? as teams are trying to rest and the schedule is just like jam packed. Uh, yeah. My understanding is that they're not out for rest, but for, you know, for in injuries. And, um, you know, I don't anticipate, uh, you know, teams are going to do a whole lot of resting, um, you know, other than the final week of the season uh, before the playoffs. But, um, you know, we'll see. It's one of those things that uh, everybody's just got to manage their group the best that they can and uh, get to that, get to the finish line healthy. Jim Alexander. Yeah, Frank, sort of following up on Kyle's question, given the schedule, given the short turnaround, could any of this been of, have been avoided? Was it kind of predictable that you would see so many teams at this point of the season struggling with injuries and depleted rosters? Well, you know, I, I think it's uh, – I, I don't know if, you know, there's more injuries this year than, than any other year. You know, that's, that's uh, something that – um, you know, people are speculating on because of the shorter, uh, shorter condensed season. Um, you know, but I, I do think that there, there wasn't really any other way, you know, we did not want to play a, another season into September, October. And, um, you know, the NBA is trying to do the best they can to, you know, manage, uh, manage business throughout a, a pandemic. Could there have been things done to mitigate it at all? Yeah, I think the, the league has done everything they can, honestly. I think they've looked at this thing at every angle, and um, everybody's trying to make the best of it. Thank you. All right, we're going to go to Mike and then a couple more. Mike? Hey, Frank, with the system that Utah has, uh, how, how much can they replicate running the stuff they do without both Conley and Mitchell, or whether it's Clarkson or Ingles? And do, you, do you expect to see somewhat of the same type of offense from Utah nonetheless? I think it's going to be more, uh, there's going to be more differences with the, the fact they don't have Rudy and Favors. 
You know, they're not going to play with a, a true lob threat rolling big tonight, uh, which is a big part of what they do. Uh, they have multiple ball handlers in, in Donovan, uh, Conley, but also Bogdanovich, Ingles, and, and Clarkson will all handle in, in very similar action. Um, the difference tonight will be uh, more of a spread five attack, you know, with, uh, with some of their shooting bigs uh, replacing uh, Rudy and Favors. Uh, and, then, and then, Frank, just wondered if you could speak generally about THT these last couple of weeks and, and if you've seen him, uh, I don't want to call it a rookie wall, but have you seen him kind of this season play more, that middle section of the season? Have you seen him emerge some these last couple of weeks? And if so, why? I think he's just continuing to, to grow. You know, we uh, we as an organization have a growth mindset with, uh, with all of our players, young players and uh, veteran players. And, um, you know, he watches his film every day. Uh, you know, we try to build the habits uh, that will help him grow and, and succeed and be efficient. And, um, you know, I think we have seen that over the last few weeks. You know, some, some growth. He's had some uh, double-digit assist games. And, um, you know, I think he's forcing less uh, in the paint and, you know, smarter with his shot selection on the perimeter. So, you know, we're on him uh, to be as, as efficient as possible, and I do think he's growing in that regard. Dave? Frank, I know you can't predict um, re-aggravations or anything like that, but uh, do you think like Drummond will be able to move forward without missing time because of the toe? Yeah, well, we're hopeful. I mean, he got <laughs> he basically just got ste- got stepped on pretty aggressively in the Brooklyn game, you know, and then he plays it back to back right after that. So, um, you know, that's something that was sort of re-injured, you know, and, uh, and obviously. Um, you know, we want it to be behind us as much as possible, and, and hopefully we can avoid that. All right, last two, uh, Harrison, and then Dan has a follow-up. Frank, you've talked a couple times about the silver linings of this stretch being that you get to see guys do more of things that they might not otherwise do. I was just wondering, what have you seen from Alex Caruso's pick-and-roll decision-making and his growth there uh, over this time without LeBron and AD? Yeah, definitely some improvement, definitely more under control. And, um, you know, the, the added responsibility of, of being a playmaker uh, has been uh, has been great for his growth. You know, um, he's definitely coming off and, and, like I said, just being more efficient, uh, more under control, uh, playing through his pivots more, and um, you know, definitely seen some growth there. Last one, Dan. Hey, Frank, I, I wanted to ask you kind of just about, like, the overall timing and sort of, I mean, it, Obviously, the season is so unique, it's hard to know exactly where you guys are in the point. It just always feels weird. Um, you have a month left to the playoffs, I guess, but 16 games. Um, is this a different type of ramp up than it normally would be in a season because of how compressed the schedule is? And does it change how you sort of approach this period of the season? You know, I think, uh, first of all, I think every team's different. And, um, you know, I, I think our, uh, our buildup uh, would have been different. Uh, without injuries uh, because the, the all-star break was so much sooner into the, the middle of the season rather than towards the end. Uh, but for us, this is going to be a different year because of Anthony and LeBron, you know, to, to, to franchise players that have been out for long stretches that, you know, the, the buildup is really going to be about uh, their re- reintegration and them getting rhythm and timing, and getting their legs under them, hopefully going into the playoffs. So uh, it's definitely going to feel, uh, feel different for us but I think it's more about those injuries than it is about the schedule. All set, Frank. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.